Yeah, I figured I'd make a video kind of showing how I work on these dryers. This isn't a how-to video, this is just a quick overview of kind of what I do, or how I do it. Um, so first I'll do is kind of just a visual. Uh, the fact that the vent comes at the top, um, right there tells me what kind of dryer I'm working on. And uh, this is preferred model, my preferred model to work on. Just kind of look it over here and I see a couple things. It's missing a screw there. Um, that was, if it was missing one of these other screws, I'd be thinking somebody had been in here, which they still might have been. It's missing some terminal block screws, but I may have stole some parts off this, I can't remember. Um, but you want to check everything out. Well, you do that anyways, but, uh, so just, uh, noting the visuals there probably have some kind of electrical thing going on there and just looking at it it's probably missing like a nut from there or something like that um, anyways I like to take the screen out I don't like to use them for parts trays but I do that over there and then the very first thing I'm gonna do uh, first thing I'm gonna take these out and these are just fill up screws so let me get my uh, tool and take those out real quick you know, people like to watch me work, and I just like to do it, get it done with, but, um, you want to make sure those screws don't fall in there, and this is where everybody does this, but if you throw it on there, you know where your parts went. You can try to get magnetic tip tools, that helps out. And uh, that's easy to forget to take that out first. And then the trick on these is you just push this back while pulling the lid forward. I could almost do it one handed. Anyways, you do that on both sides. And then you can uh, take the lid off. Let me put the camera down and I'll do that real quick. Yeah, I'm sure everybody wants to see how I did that, but there's videos showing people doing that. Just when you push this, that way you don't have to push something in here to release this. By pulling the lid forward and pushing this back, it just releases the top. And then what I did is I just got a, found a dial laying around. I just cut it to the height that I want and I stuck a nail in it and duct taped it on. And that's how I hold up my lid when I'm working on my, by myself. A lot of people will flip that over. See if you flip it back too far and it slips, it puts too much strain on those wires. So, you can look in here, while I'm in here, uh, I can look at this felt, and the, this felt looks pretty good, so already, that's a good plus, because it takes a long time to replace those felts. The um, belt looks good, it's nice and tight, and I might as well kind of do the door switch test, this isn't an official one, but this is 90% of the time this will work, so I just listen for the click, that probably is going to be a good door switch, I'll actually test it out. There's this thing on there, I gotta get a little deal to take that out. But what I gotta do next is um, take this screw out here, and there's one like that on this side, and then just move the front panel off. And because this stick is on this side of it, I can do this with the, the hood up, I guess you'd call it. So all I'm gonna do is take those screws out, and I'll be right back. It's kind of funny with. When uh, you do stuff you don't even think about, that's why film is kind of good. Um, this is just a Harbor Freight pick, comes with a little pick set. And I use that to get this disconnected. Um, I already took that screw out, but I want to disconnect this before I uh, take this screw out. So that way if it pulls, it won't be yanking on the cords there. Just thought I'd show that. Now I'll finish taking off that door. Alright, I'll attempt to do this one-handed. Ah, oh, shoot, I should be wearing... You should wear gloves when you do this so you don't cut yourself. This is pretty sharp. Um, but the weight of the drum sitting on this kind of holds it up for you, but it's going to kind of jerk on you when you... There it goes. And then what you got to come, come to the ends, it's got little knobs down there to hold it in. Lift it up there. I'll show you a close-up what that looks like there. So you're just clearing that. And those just go into the little square holes down there. 
watch out these will fall off if you do fall off um, the little spiky part goes in between there and then I'll try to do this without cutting myself yeah. I'm going to use two hands because I don't want to cut my hands I'm just going to lift this off and move it out of the way yeah so I got it off don't do stuff the way I do it this is just how I do it you should really you should wear gloves on this because uh, you will cut your hands um, and again watch for those clips that they fall off pretty easy on some of them so on this you should wear gloves when you do this I don't know if I can even get a shot of it when you get good you can reach in there just grab the wheel Let me show you what I'm talking about here grab that tension pulley right there and you're gonna push it to the right that plastic you're just gonna push it all the way to the right and you can just loop it off um, the wheel I don't think I can even I'm gonna I'll try to film this oops I don't know what I just did with the camera I bumped some thing but it says it's still recording so you kind of do this without even looking I put my thumb hopefully this is coming up on the wheel Pull it back. It's fighting me a little bit there. Oh, the darn belt's kind of stuck on there. There it goes. If I wasn't filming that, I usually just reach under there and do that by hand. And then this whole drum's going to fall on you, so watch out. And then, so now all I'm gonna do is uh, do this as a handle, lift it up, it'll clear that little spot right there. There we go. Just uh, be careful with this so you don't bang it up and it doesn't roll away on you. And then from here, you find your money that pays for your cleaning supplies. There's usually some coins in the bottom there. I've seen quite a few coins sometimes. Like $10 worth of change if you get lucky. Um, so then here I'm going to work on my rollers next. And then you know, just clean this out. This is actually pretty clean in here. Anyways, I'll, uh, what do I want to do next? I think I'm just going to dust it out. I'll be right back. Okay, I just pulled that off. Um, put a little drop of motor oil inside uh, both those there make sure it's going real good and set it aside um, let's see I'll show you a trick how I test the motor switch one thing you can do right now is reach in there and just make sure it's not stuck and it's not so that's the first electrical thing I'll check but I like to check it from the back that so we don't have to disconnect everything and then all I'm going to do is pull these little triangle things off. Oh, this is pretty stuck, not super stuck. This one works. That one's pretty good. But it should it should both be moving real smooth like that. So just, there's a little plastic clip there. You take it off. You can watch videos on how to work on these things. But I'm just going to take those off, clean it up, clean the bottom of this up. And then uh, you can check this now. It's going to be stiff because it oh, shouldn't be that stiff though. There it goes. Make sure it's moving freely and uh, I'll be right back so on that bracket there I just take the screw out I right, fell down here and then it's got these little clippy things on there I just lift it like this and kind of work it back and forth and it'll just pop that off you just want to make sure sometimes these will go flying don't lose that and then we get the I already got this one done spins way better now I'm just getting ready to clean up this one. Just take your pick tool, get in there. Can't really see it's getting dark out here. Just pop that off. You get good. You get good. You can do that with one hand. Just get it or with your tool and get it off. But I'm not quite there yet. There's a. Uh, let me clean up that roller. Let me show you a little quick trick of the trade there. 
So, see how that screw's not lining up? You know, you attempted to push uh, this bar over trying to make that line up. All you do is you push on the on the floor. See, I'm putting my weight down here. That's how you move that around. Anyways, and then you put your screw in. So, working really good right now. These, I just push them on. And if it, for some reason you couldn't get on, you could take like a socket there and put it on there and push it on there, but that's plenty tight. There's a little plastic triangle that holds that on there anyways. Okay, so that's pretty much done for the front. In fact, I could put the drum in now, but if I did that, Murphy's Law would say that I uh, ain't have motor problems. But, um, plus I, I want to test that ignition. Might need to uh, play with around with that uh, switch, plunger switch I was showing you. Anyways, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off the screws and get to the back panel. This is where you want to do your work anyways. Um, just note that I can feel that it goes underneath here on this model. And also the, um, the outside lip goes on here. Sometimes they build these differently to where this plate's on top. Or, and so you just want to pay attention there. It looks like it's got one, two, three, four, five, six screws. So I'll just take all those off. Pull this panel and set it aside. I'll be right back. Okay, quick note. Your uh, documentation should be here. It's kind of weird that it's unfolded. Usually it's folded up. Um, but a good idea start yourself a little database of model numbers. Take some z copies of these because sometimes they're missing and it might help you out down the road. Um, so I'm just going to set this aside for now. And let's see what we're up against here. If this is missing, that tells me somebody's probably been working on it. Luckily, this is a little bit of a nicer timer, so this timer probably won't have issues. Um, everything looks normal. So I'll show you a little trick. I'm going to check out the motor, that little inertia switch, and some of the electrical all at one shot. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to get a little test set up hooked up here. Okay, I just got my little test box hooked up. Basically, all I'm doing is running 110 to the neutral into the red lead. Um, that's actually wrong. Sorry, hold on. Let me fix that. It's supposed to be the neutral and the black lead. Okay, got it wired in right. Neutral and the black lead. Red lead's for your heater. Um, don't do this. It's very dangerous, and I need to make a better setup. Because if those, like, fall off and hit the kit chassis, it's throw my breaker and stuff but so I'm gonna turn it on I hooked the door switch wire up already and so where's my button here I'm gonna put on my time Can't see there. there we go and turn the buzzer on just for the kicks and then we push the start here we go Stuff. I'm just going to turn it off. So what that just did for me is essentially at least my door switch works, works in the closed position so I just tested that. I tested that inertia switch. Well I did not test that inertia switch because I got to do that a different way. Um, but basically I tested out the motor. So at this point all I got to do is test out the inertia switch and then I'm done with the whole front end. Um, so I know the motor's working good. It's spewing out dirt. Um, let me get this unhooked because this thing's real dangerous. And then we'll just test the inertia switch and then we'll be done. Okay, so to test the inertia switch, I just hook one lead with my continuity tester to uh, the po power red power lead because that goes down to the motor. And then I hook the other one to the red power lead on my timer. And then uh, got it continuity and I think it's on I might just come over here and I reach in and I push the button and if it works I should hear it there you go so now this whole front end is good ready to be buttoned up um, but I didn't check my uh, I forgot to check that I should have I'd have to open the door to make that light come on but I can continuity check that but there's a little light bulb I just saw. I forgot to check that. And then just look over. Make sure there's not a bunch of dirt on there. This one will get cleaned up in a separate step. So 
I should I keep saying they're gonna make a checklist because I'll forget to check that light bulb but anyways uh so I'm thinking I'm gonna call it a call it done all I'm gonna do is take off this the screws for this panel and uh remove that and then call it a night because it's getting really cold out here okay I got the back cover off figure I should just one last tip before I call it a night um so I just hook up my uh, ohms meter up to um, my line one and you could go to neutral but my ground is right here and uh, the neutral wire there is tied to the ground anyway so anyhow so I just got it to the ground wire and to the line one again you could do it to neutral and the reason why that is is because this white wire actually goes to the neutral um, then you just take your your meter and you set it on the resistance your continuity won't work because uh, it's about 13 ohms through the light bulb. Then all you do is, well here I can show you right now, but I'm not going to do the whole shebang. If I put my meter on uh, resistance, you see it's open right now. If I open the door over there, um, then it will read 13 ohms which tells, because it's reading it through the light bulb. And then of course if I close it, it would be open again. So anyway, so that's how you can test your light bulb um, to see if it's burned out or not. And if um, if it was burned out, it would always read open, and then we'd have to go change that light bulb. So it should light up. Uh, final test would be when we actually hook it up, but um, it's seeing the light bulb in there, which is a good sign. Got that up. Anyhow, uh, next I'll uh, not now, but I'll show you how I test out these switches. It's really pretty easy. You can do it a couple of different ways. Um, anyhow, I'll get into that tomorrow. As yeah, we're shot a cameraman, uh, so I'm gonna kind of zoom in and show you the components that I'm gonna check, and then I'll get back and see. We'll, I'll see how this goes. So you got your operating thermostat down here. It's got uh, two leads. The two purple leads are like a heating circuit to trick the thermostat into thinking it's warmer than it is that's how you get your cold cooler temperatures and then the red leads are the hot leads that essentially go to your uh, heating element so you should have continuity across the hot leads and then uh, across the purple leads you'll read a resistance um, this is your thermal fuse you just need to check that for continuity over here I check uh, for continuity on your um, heating element leads those are the far outer ones and then we've got this orange one in here it's kind of like a I believe a sensor lead goes up and up in the timer or something um, and then if uh, the current can run through the heating element it'll go through this little this is a like a high limit if your operating thermostats messed up and not closing or opening like it should and it's getting too hot this is like a backup and this will pop open and so you just want to make sure that's cold right now, or connect got continuity through the bottom and the top same thing this is just in case you got like a fire or something up here it gets really hot it's like these two failed and it's, it's detecting it's getting super hot up here this will pop and this is a this is typically not considered resettable so you just need to check for continuity there and that's about it that I'm going to check right now. So let me see if I can get the camera in here. Hold on. Okay, originally I was going to go around you, show me, test all the components, which you can do it that way. But I kind of think a, a faster way to do it. So I just put my red lead on my red wire, and my black lead on my black wire. And what I'm going to show you how to do is how to test every one of the sensors that belongs to the heating element basically all the red wire so we're going to test everything except for uh, the purple wires that go to the to the little heater on the cycle thermostat and also we're not testing the um, the thermal fuse this way so those two you'd still need to test manually but every other component in line we can test because when you get the heater um, going through there essentially you get the the 240 volts going from that lead to that lead 
Now, we're also going to test the timer. That's kind of the neat thing too. So in one shot, we can test the timer to make sure it's getting continuity to the call for heat. Um, and all the circuit stuff in between. So I just got my deal set to tone. And I'm on there. And so then I come over here. And uh, you got to set your dryer to something that calls for heat. So I'll just put on time dry like 60 I guess that's 60 minutes there and then come down here and I'm gonna push the plunger in so this will simulate the call for the engine to come on so right there we just tested in one test you can test that switch there make sure it's working test your timer to make sure it's gonna call for heat and every one of the components in the back here so there's no need for me to go check it and everything individually I just checked all that stuff in one shot and it's pretty easy to clip onto there so that's a little trick out in the field you can't really get to that front plunger so you can't always do that but uh, it's good to understand how your wiring goes and so these are the two wires that connect there like if I were to hook onto the here I'd get toned because it's closed right there anyways uh, that's about it. Only other thing I need to check for uh, ground, and I'll show you a better way to do this, but just uh, make sure you're not getting a shorted heating element. See if it got toned there, that would mean I'm grounded out. Uh, so that's good. Alright, here's uh, another little trick you can do. So all I did is clipped on from my neutral to my black lead and from earlier you saw that's how I tested the motor out. So this circuit goes um, through your motor. Anyways, so I got that hooked up there and uh, well, anyways, so if you push my start button it makes continuity. And that is the way you can tech check this fuse down here because um, what this does is this actually goes, and this also checks your should check your door switch too, because if your door switch is open, I got it hooked up over there. If I were to open the door switch, this shouldn't work. If that fuse is blown, it shouldn't work. And and so you get to test your start button, your blue fuse, and then uh, your thermal fuse, and then your door switch, all in one shot there. So I think this is about enough of uh, electrical troubleshooting. Next, all I'm going to do is a uh, I'm going to clean this out, it's probably pretty dirty. I'm going to take these four screws off and just take this off. I already have the screws from earlier out. you got to make sure these screws are out. And then you can, uh, sometimes it's easier to lift the top to help you get this out. Um, usually like lift up, tilt it out, and then pull it out the rest of the way. Alright, this is why you want to pull that out. It's got a little junk built up in here. Uh, looks like the seal is good though, so that'll don't have to worry about replacing this. And this seal looks good too. Usually these are bad. There's a lot of nasty stuff in there. And then uh, you know, of course, this is all gunked up. So just clean all that out. I actually do the same thing in here. These will sometimes get full of dust. I like to clean these out. The way this comes out is you is the the head of the screws on the other side. You just take that out and. Then get that off and then we just lift the whole unit up of course you gotta take your wires off and then if you take this screw out here and this screw out here it'll separate um, the heating element if you ever have to work on that these when you pull out your heating element it's about 9 to 10 ohms This gives you a good idea that you probably have a good heating element and we already checked to make sure it's not grounded out to the side there Anyway, so that's a I think that's going to be about it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them below. Maybe I'll try to make some more videos. You should really try to understand your wiring diagrams and your just your wiring and test things out. If you get really good, you should be able from the control panel right here, you should be able to figure out a way to test out just about every component. The only one that gets hard is that plunger thing because I don't haven't figured out a way to activate that without pulling apart you know taking the drum out or at least the front end off or something but if you could maybe you could make a little tool that you could stick in there and pull I don't know but if you could get that little piece done um, I guess you could pretty much uh, test everything out except for that 
Anyways, um, maybe if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you subscribe, you'll see more videos as they come out. Thanks for watching.